Does the brain decide who would be a scientist, criminal, politician, or poor or rich? Is that what brain decides? Today, we'll understand by getting into the space of neuroscience. Does the brain have the determinism of our life? Is it determining who I am and what I will be? Or do I have a choice? From both the sides, there are arguments and counter arguments. In today's video, we are going to explore into that space. We will consider two awful cases and which have been researched and have been understood thoroughly through the neuroscientific processes. Are we kind of puppets which are just running as per the nature's command through the structure of the brain or do we have free will to change ourselves consciously? We are going to answer these two questions. Please stay tuned till the end of this video and you will find something amazing. We are going to go back to a couple of cases which happened. What exactly is the impact of brain on our life? The first case is one of the most tragic incidents happened in the University of Texas at Austin. At about 11.30 on 1st of August in 1966, a young man enters into the campus. He goes to the main building and gets onto the tower where he chooses to kill people by shooting them. And in the process of almost 90 minutes of this heinous incident of mass murder, this person kills 15 persons and also injures 31 people before he was killed by the local police authorities. This incident puts question about why mass murder after he is killed police tries to find out what is the identity of this person. His name was Charles Witchman and astonishingly there was no criminal record and then police reaches the house of Whitman where they found before killing 15 people he has murdered his wife and his mother. Not just the police found that Whitman's mother and wife they have been murdered by Charles Whitman but they also recovered the suicide note of Whitman where he has narrated few things, including this statement, where he is writing, I do not really understand myself these days. I am supposed to be an average, rational and intelligent young man. However, lately I have been victim of many unusual and irrational thoughts. And he goes on saying that after one session, I never saw the doctor again. And since then, I have been fighting my mental turmoil alone and seemingly of no avail. After my death, I wish that an autopsy would be performed on me to see if there is any visible physical disorder. So this person, for some reason, had changed. His personality had changed and has become kind of a criminal. And after the autopsy, they could find out there was a tumor in the frontal lobe which was pressing a part called amygdala. Amygdala is a very important part in mediating emotional responses. If you want to know more about amygdala and the emotional processing in the brain, please do check out the video link that I have provided in the description and understand more about brain and how it mediates the emotions. And if you are new to the channel, please do consider subscribing to understand this and many more fascinating stories about our brain, mind and life. Now coming back to the understanding of what happened in Charles Whitman's brain. Many of the scientists who, who actually researched on this, they could find out that the amygdala, which was pressed by this tumor, probably was creating a lot of internal turbulence of emotion and which was leading to such kind of heinous crime in the mind of Charles Whitman. What does it say? Does it say that we are all victim or we are all puppets because of the structure of the brain, because of the biology? Is it that what we need to understand or we need to take the determinism of the brain structure and the brain chemicals and our biology on our behavior? But it has a social repercussion. That means anyone can commit crime and blame it on the brain. But before we take any conclusion, we need to understand or we need to see another side. Now we'll take the second case. What suggests something else? It is in 1990s when a neuroscientist 
Paul Bakirita claimed something fascinating. He claimed that he can help people see things using their tongue. And not just that he claimed, he actually conducted experiments through which people could see things using their test buds. But what actually prompted Bakirita to do this, we will have to go back in history. Paul Bakirita got motivated to get into the space of neuroscience and work on neuroplasticity because of a tragedy in his own family. Let's go back. In 1959, Paul's father, his name was Pedro Bakirita, who was a professor and also very intelligent person who was 65 years of age at that point in time, had a stroke, a brain stroke, which caused paralysis and also he could not speak. He was on the wheelchairs and doctors said that it is impossible to get him back on his feet and neither he would be able to speak because there's a lot of damage in the brain cells. Now, Paul's elder brother, George Bakrita, who was a medical student at that point in time, he thought of taking up the challenge of rehabilitation. Now, George, not knowing anything about rehabilitation, not knowing anything about the process of helping somebody in these conditions, he wanted to apply some common sense. He said that in the early childhood, we do not stand up straightway. We start crawling in order to start moving. Every human child would start crawling. And he applied that on his father at the age of 65 when he had that attack. Now he is prompting his father to crawl, which was apparently very cruel. And he also participated in games so that his father would be motivated to do that and see what happened. In about three years time, with consistent efforts, George could persuade his father, could help his father get back on his feet. So Pedro Bacarita was back on his feet and not just that, he could speak and join back his profession. And he continued in that teaching field till the age of retirement, that is age of 70. And after that also, he was not inactive. He continued doing activities. And at the age of 73, in fact, he was hiking with his friends on mountains where he had a heart attack and he died. Now, following his death, they wanted to perform autopsy on his brain. Paul Bakirita at that point in time, who was already into neuroscience, he thought that there must be some small lesion somewhere inside the brain for which he was inactive for almost three years and he could come back. But when the report of autopsy came, they were thoroughly confused because 97% of the nerves connecting the cerebral cortex to the spinal cords were damaged. So how this could happen is a miracle. And that prompted Paul Bakirita to dedicate his life to neuroplasticity. And he started observing and doing a lot of research in this field and establishing that brain structure keep changing with our activity and we can overpower the structural aspect of the brain. What he actually established is the structural specialization of the brain can shift. And Paul Bakirita could actually demonstrate this through certain experiments. He created a typical gadget in which a camera would be there. And from the camera, that gadget helped people to see things using their test parts. He fixed a camera on different objects. And from that camera, he transformed that signal to electrical signal, the visual signal in the camera to electrical signal. And electrodes were put on the tongue of a subject. A subject is typically someone who would be part of the experiment. And the subject would be asked to see things and not just they could see things through this gadget. They also could perform certain tasks like when they were asked to catch a ball which was rolled on a table and moving towards them, their eyes were blindfolded. But still, nine out of ten times they could catch the ball even if it was moving and they could hold it. That was sufficiently strong evidence that the brain was getting signal in the visual cortex in some way so that it could give signals to its body 
to catch the ball and the signal was passing on to the brain through the test buds the gustatory nerves now what paul bakrita would say is eyes do not see the brain sees and how it receives the signal is immaterial and brain can reorganize itself if we give the right kind of direction right kind of command and make the right choices this was a huge path breaking experiment and finding through research by paul bakrita now we hear this term neuroplasticity so often but this is what exactly it means that we can experience change in our brain structure reorganization in the brain pathways can happen because of very many reasons also because of our own practice our own choice now this gives at least a window of opportunity to change our behavior change our skills change our abilities even our personality and we are not mere puppets we have the choice to change ourselves it's not that brain or nature's design is the final thing we have been also given by nature the power to change ourselves at the same time we cannot even ignore the biological impact on ourselves brain has different parts different locations which govern our cognition that is our thought and emotion and also our movements or motor functions if you want to know more on this do check out on the video here and understand how the brain governs the body and how the brain can change our expressions and help us experience life i trust you loved the video and understood something very important about ourselves and knowing that we have the choice